Let's walk through this. It's very wordy. It's very filled with language that we've developed over a long period of time. So it's very dense with meaning. So let's unpack it. Okay. The first thing is, this paragraph is all about defining a formula. It's all about defining a formula. Now you've heard this word before, but now I want to give it a proper, specific definition. So, what is a formula? Well, to start with, a formula is just like an equation. In fact, pretty much every formula is something, something equals, equals something else. So it's an equation, but it's not just any equation. It's a special kind. What's special about it? It's an equation where the subject, I'm going to define this in a second, the subject is a quantity we can evaluate. All right, let's unpack that. This will be much easier if I give you an example. So underneath here, let me give you uh, the formula that comes in this first question here, c equals 2 pi r. <laughs> so this is a formula for the circumference of a circle. <coughs> the subject is this guy over here. The subject. Okay. So this is a single variable on the left hand side by itself. Let me say that again. It's a single variable, or a single pronumeral, I should say. It's a single pronumeral. It's on the left hand side of the equation, and it's by itself. So the subject of this equation is C, the circumference. The circumference is a quantity that we can evaluate. You can find out what is the circumference. What's it equal to? If you have other information, so have a look at this formula, circumference equals, what other information do I need to put into this to get the circumference? Pi. Well, so pi is, is a letter, but it's just a number. It's a number we all can agree on, that we all know. 3.1415, blah, 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 blah. But this R here is a piece of information I'm going to need to like measure. What does R stand for? Radius. It's the radius. So once you find the radius, you can substitute it in, and that lets you evaluate the circumference. Okay? So you take your other information, like radius, and then you substitute it. We know what that is, right? Take this out, you swap it for the correct value into the right-hand side. Everything you need to put is in the right-hand side. So for example, you could contrast this to a very, very similar formula, but one that's backwards. So if I divide both sides by 2 pi, and then rearrange, I'll get this. Do you agree that that's true? What have I done to both sides? I have divided by 2 pi. Okay. So this is another formula. It's still a formula, it's still an equation, and it has a subject, which is a single pronoun rule on the left-hand side by itself. But it's not a formula for circumference anymore, is it? It's a formula for radius. radius if you know what the circumference is. So you've got like a big round thing and then you wrap a string around it. That'll tell you the circumference. Then you substitute it in and that'll give you the radius. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now therefore, since you can see what I've done from here to here, is the subject used to be C. It used to be the circumference. And now the subject is R. Now it's the radius. This process from here to here is called a really important process that is what 706 is about. It's called changing the subject. Because the subject was one thing, and then we just rewrote it so it was something else. Okay. So really quickly, for example, let's have a look at this one here. I wonder how many of you recognize what this formula is without reading off all the context around it. Does anyone recognize this? Celsius to yeah, this is the Celsius to Fahrenheit formula. Okay, so underneath where you've written your example, I've just run out of space down here. Underneath where you've written your example of the <laughs> circumference, example two. So c equals five over nine f minus thirty-two. This is a formula for the degrees in Celsius, given this other information, the degrees in Fahrenheit. Okay? So for example, I don't know if anyone has any, like been the US or Canada and that kind of thing, places that measure in Fahrenheit. I think they say like a 100 degree temperature is really Yeah, okay, great. Good idea. Is really hot, right? So can we find out what would 100 degrees Fahrenheit be equivalent to in Celsius, right? So I'm going to substitute in 
f equals 100. Let's see what happens. C will be equal to 5 over 9, and I'm just going to write 100 minus 32. I've done my substitution. Uh, 100 take away 32 is 68, isn't it? 68? What's 5 ninths of 68? 30, is it? 7 point? Hmm? Okay, so this would be a hot temperature for, um, for the day, right? This would be a pretty bad summer day for us. But it's also important because it's pretty close to body temperature. Pretty close. Anyway. So this is a formula for degrees Celsius given degrees Fahrenheit. Can we change the subject? What would we have to do to change the subject so that F was the subject? What would be something we could do? We'll start here. Uh, want to suggest? Yeah. Um, okay, I can I can do a lot of things here. This is a lot more complicated than this guy, right? I could move this, but I think you'll find it'll be easier if I actually move this out of the way first. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides by a number. What number will I multiply both sides by that'll get rid of 5 over 9? Nine? 9 over 5, which is called the <coughs> reciprocal, right? So if I multiply both sides by 9 over 5, that leaves me with 9 over 5c equals what? F F Just that? And you can see now there's only one step left to get F as a single pretty rule on the left hand side by itself. What do I do to both sides? I'll add 32. While I'm at it, I'll make F on the left hand side. So now, given a certain temperature in Celsius, I can find the temperature yeah. in Fahrenheit. Right? Mm -hmm. So you can see that I've changed the subject. It's still a formula, but it's a formula for something else. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. 